Good morning, Massimo. Good morning, Andrea, and good morning, everyone. Thank you for participating at this uh, new webinar dedicated to the power supply solutions and uh, it's a concept of power supply for safety power supplies, which is not, let's say, uh, really known as concept in the market. We have, uh, we made this webinar more than three years back. <laughs> and uh, now we are renewing a little bit uh, with new information and uh, we have also a session dedicated just for information, a session dedicated to the webinar and then uh, for the answer, uh, say for some topics and maybe for repeating the concept. And uh, so we have two presentation in, uh, uh, let's say one hour time, more or less. I think we can start Massimo, maybe. Yes, I think so. There are people are already connecting and maybe for the first part is only dedicated to say dedicated to the GMI presentation, few slides, and then we go to the uh, power supply. Uh, you can just, uh, of course, you cannot uh, talk, but we talk. <laughs> you just put uh, your question on Q and R, uh, and we try to answer during the webinar or after the webinar. Okay, let's uh, start uh, with the two, this uh, information regarding the uh, our speakers today, myself, Andrea, I'm a global account manager for GEM International and uh, work in, uh, with the main customers and um, in the safety application, in the control applications. I was responsible for European market now just following this, uh, just these big customers in, uh, in the say for uh, application in, uh, in the um, say in the safety in um, oil and gas uh, chemical and petrochemical and, my, and there is also Massimo with us Massimo is our product manager and also responsible for customer support and uh, so he's uh, collecting a lot a lot of questions for the power supplies and of course other things we may have uh, in, uh, during our let's say daily activities as a very long experience, and so you may uh, think, uh, and also send him over email if you have any question after also this webinar. Information about the company. So company started in 1993, and uh, but we have a more experience as um, Icon Instruments starting in 1970. Company is based in Italy, Milan. We have our production in uh, near Monza. Uh, but also we offer our safety in the different continents uh, in uh, all over the world. We are in the safety markets, uh, intrinsically safe uh, markets in the uh, seal functional safety markets. Uh, and uh, so we have uh, all interfaces dedicated for uh, interfacing the systems, the PLC, the DCS with the field, all the interfaces. <clears throat> this is the product range, so we provide intrinsic safe barriers, uh, sealed safety relays, uh, isolator for uh, safety, no, uh, say for safe area applications, and power supplies, that is the topic of today for uh, safety application, multiplexers for temperature measurements in uh, uh, up to zone one, a termination board for connecting all interfaces we have with the PLC in the special dedicated termination boards, uh, uh, motherboards that can be connected to the PLC with the uh, uh, dedicated cables, heart multiplexer <clears throat> for heart management, surge protections for um, say, uh, surges protection. Uh, because basically this is a very important in case you have a lightning or over voltage protection, over voltage uh, discharges uh, in, uh, in, in the field. Loop indicators and the last bullet is uh, regarding the courses uh, like functional safety or uh, um, EX courses. Also around this bullet, there are all these webinar we arrange uh, during the year. Few information, we have all certifications. So for um, main markets like uh, European market, uh, US market, uh, Asian markets, and uh, like we have certification for Brazil, for India, for uh, China, and so on. 
we provide uh, um, of course uh, also the seal tree and the systematic capability for our, all our products <clears throat> as i said produced in italy uh, computer stability full testing on the percent uh, higher automated manufacturing process uh, for all our products organization in the world we have uh, offices and uh, with different distributors so 200 people uh, in our organization in different continents uh, number of uh, courses number of installation just few words name of customer like system vendors oems epc and the users we want to go quickly to the power supply i leave massimo to uh, explain everything about the power supply solution Okay, thank you, Andrea, and uh, good morning also from my side to all our attendees. Well, uh, we begin our webinar by talking about and listing which application require a safe power supply system. And by safe, we mean a system that uh, guarantees our industrial process high reliability in terms of process availability, a simple system to maintain which can be installed in a critical environmental condition. In a simple world, a system certified to ensure that our SIS can work safely while maintain high availability. A power supply system is uh, required for high demand application, such uh, offshore platform, fire fighting system, fire and gas application, and so on. All those applications in which safety is in the first place, but also in all those applications where the industrial process must always be kept constant and productive in order not to have even lose in terms of money. But uh, what are the most important requirements that the market asks to us? for this highly reliable power system. Of course, a safety power supply has to be compliant with the ESC 6150A regulation and meets the demands of functional safety. Another key point for the market is the possibility to install the power supply system in a certified area this allow us uh, to install the system closer to the load, saving uh, on cabling cost. To allow this installation in a certified area, the GMI power supply system has been certified for Zone 2, Division 2 installation, and offers the possibility to disconnect a module without interrupting the normal operation. This functionality is ensured by the Hot swapping system, which each uh, rack of the power supply system can be equipped with. Not having the auto swapping capability means uh, that the final user must install additional circuit brake certified for zone two division two. Uh, furthermore, the hot swapping function allows us to have easy maintenance. And at the same time, it allows us uh, to have a device able to minimize downtime, downtime because as uh, we have already said, an interruption of normal operation can cause economic damage to the plant. Each power module mounted on a system with hot swap capability can be removed on its own without disrupting or affecting the application, which is another of the most frequent market requests. Also, in the event of a failure, you need easy access to all device data to deal with the problem quickly and effectively. Unwanted or undesirable behavior the lack of a specific functionality must be highlighted and easily diagnosed. The diagnostic module on board the GMI power supply system 
rec allow us to have all the required data under control and to be able to transfer them via Modbus or via digital content to a dedicated system. This functionality allows us to have easy troubleshooting of our system and loop. And again, every application has a different uh, safety and functional requirement, which all needs to be fulfilled by a flexible system. Modular design, configuration and mounting option are all features that must be taken into account. Our power supply is flexible system that can be arranged according to the requirements of the application. It's possible to have different rack dimension or have a front or wall mounting option. The output type uh, and the related redundancy can be arranged. In fact, uh, more than 50 different configurations can be done or foreseen. Our system has a low consumption. This means uh, being able to manage a system with low energy consumption, which means containing cost in terms of installation and maintenance. This must be done without uh, suffering losing in terms of uh, efficiency, without compromising the life expectancy of the system and its integrity. The PSS1250 uh, system meets uh, these needs with an efficiency of uh, nearly 90% and an extended operating range. Available up uh, to C3, we know that to meet uh, ESC 61500 and their requirements, instruments uh, must be able to detect or tolerate under voltage and or over voltage condition, and also maintain the SIF with, uh, within the normal operating range. These requirements is necessary to avoid dangerous situation and to protect the instrumentation involved in the application. The PSS 1250 is a certified device with both under voltage or over voltage protection. And uh, last uh, but not least, ash and Virman's operation. Many installations in the oil and gas, pharmaceutical, chemical, or petrochemical industry requires the device to work in harsh environmental condition. So this device has to be designed according to this requirement. Since we are talking about installation for safety purpose, the capability of a device to work in such an environment is a key point. We can start from the extended temperature range, we can see that it's a coat by dipping. It has been tested for maritime application and tested for vibration and AMC certified. This feature determines the fact that the PSS 1250 has a 20 years lifetime expectation or 160,000 hour operation. Well, now let's start by introducing the concept of a SIS. SIS is a set of a subsystem that make up uh, the safety loop. Within the safety loop, we have field devices, such as a transmitter or sensor, which allow us to control, detect, and measure variables in the field, such as temperature, pressure, or other. They are driven by barriers or isolators that provides for limiting the current towards the hazardous area or to isolate the field instrument. And in turn, the signal sent by the field loop will be acquired, managed, and interpreted by what is a brain of the SIS or PLC DCS system, which will decide on any action to be taken to make a plan to save. And again, power interfaces are as can be a safety relay, which will then act on a valve and on actuator, we are, which allow us to bring the system safety in case of need. The main concept that needs to be understood is that every single element of a SIS must be sized with a seal level, such as to allow us to obtain the overall seal of the SIS requirement. All the power supply that will be part of the SIS, for example, those that will power the PLC DCS 
those that will uh, supply voltage to operate bulbs and actuator, those that will allow barrier isolator on and transmitter to work properly, will also play a fundamental role in a safety related loop. And it's also important that they also have an adequacy level. All components of a SIF, including power supplies, must be safety related and have a seal level. This helps us uh, to have a safety loop and with the correct redundancy, a loop uh, with high availability to the process. The slide shows our safety loop made up uh, of all its elements, correct size and seal certified to get the most out of the functional safety of our system. Let's uh, as ask ourselves now, why shouldn't the power supply system that feed the wool system be seal certified? Why shouldn't we make sure that the system that support the entire system is also certified for, for some functional safety? Keep in mind that the failure of the power supply system can cause the complete loss of our loop, with consequence loses in terms of productivity and therefore of money. It's also really important to make that power supply system that supports our entire safety loop safe and reliable. In the following slide, some extract from the ESC 61508 are show which idea specifically with the power supply system of the SIS, which must be considered in the seal calculation. So, why it's uh, correct to use a safety power supply system? It's uh, fair to distinguish what is a standard power supply and what uh, a safe and certified power supply system like that of the GMI offers. Here in the slide, we mention what are the main reasons that lead us to advise against the use of a simple standard power supply for our application. As we have seen in the previous slide, a standard power supply is not designed based on the directive of the ESC 61 and 508. It does not have, have made a calculation defined for the safety function to be obtained. It does not allow uh, to have redundant protection from uh, over voltage issue. Why in a safety power supply system redundant protection are a fundamental requirement. And again, uh, standard power supply can be used in a redundant configuration, but they do not guarantee that our application is totally safe for the reason related to common mode faults. And also, standard power supply oft, often require external O-ring diodes to allow for redundancy. This means to add external wiring, especially for high load currents, create an high voltage drop, which has a strong impact on the supply voltage. It's true that it's possible to adjust the output voltage to compensate for the voltage drop, but this operation increases consumption considerably. In addition, a standard power supply has a higher number of spurious faults than the safety power supply. We know well how a spurious fault can also lead to dangerous failures for the application. And again, standard power supply use internal components with limited operating range to keep the cost down. This affects the lifetime of the device. For this reason, internally to the safety power supply are used components with an higher operating range that allow the system to work at a lower stress level. This leads to less failure and consequently a considerably longer lifetime than standard power supply system. At this point, why it's important to use a safety power supply system in our application? First of all, we know that the standard voltage for a normally energized load is in the 
20, 30 volt DC range. Condition that leads to power supply output voltage between two and 20 volt and higher than 30 volt DC are considered dangerous failures which negatively affect the application. Well, a safety power supply significantly reduce and detect dangerous faults thanks to a built-in diagnostic system. In fact, if an anomalous output condition is detected by the safety power supply diagnostic, it brings the output to zero volts, which represent the safe fault condition. Plus, a full transistor alert the PLC system, which can act as per C specification. Even in case of a safety power supply output over voltage condition, the internal diagnostic activates so the redundant protection system for limiting the output voltage, which brings the later to a zero volt. This means into, into a safe fault condition. What are the possible risks and conditions that uh, we consider dangerous in relation to the use of a power supply? The concept of uh, safety is very important also with regard to the power supply system because the failure of a power supply can cause serious accident to lead to serious losing in terms of uh, human life, serious environment damages, and serious cost losses for companies. For this reason, it's necessary to have a safe device that guarantee high performance. But uh, what are the dangerous conditions for a power supply system? Well, mainly there are two dangerous fault uh, conditions. Um, okay. The first one is an undefined load voltage in a between uh, 2 and 20 volts. The other two are the ones that bring the output of our system to an over voltage. This means uh, voltage higher than 30 volt DC or even 35 volt DC as considered as dangerous and potential destructive. But uh, let's see in details. Let's analyze uh, what happens when the output voltage of our system reaches an undefined voltage between 2 and 20 volt DC. This condition must be considered as dangerous failure of uh, our power supply because an incorrectly powered load works or can work out of specification. And this leads to a reduction in a load performance that can cause a premature instrument failure. Uh, Andrea, is the next slide? Okay. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Often we try to, to avoid this issue using redundancy, but uh, we mistakenly think that uh, two power supplies in parallel are sufficient to make us immune from possible faults in the power supply system. Redundancy cannot solve on its own and cannot guarantee us immunity from power supply failure. Because a standard power supply, it does not take into account the common mode that can afflict standard power supplies. This common mode can cause poor system fault with the related production downtime, which will significantly affect cost. The redundancy of, a power, of safety power supply minimizes this risk because common mode failure are considered in, in the safe calculation necessary to get the certification for a safety related device. The second failure, dangerous failure condition of a power supply is when the output voltage reaches a value either than. 30 volt DC. In this condition, the load is subjected to an extra volt, which can damage it. Or in case of output voltage higher than 35 volt, 
you see, the field instrumentation can suffer a definite disruption. We can take, for example, an engine cooling system, which works thanks to a standard power supply. Suppose that this standard power supply fails and goes into an over, an over voltage condition, damaging the cooling system. This will lead to an overheating of the engine, which will lead to serious consequence for the whole system connected to it. Once again, I want to underline the value of having a safety power supply system, which guarantees us high performance and high safety. Now we introduce uh, the concept of safety power supply applied to a typically application as uh, the energized to save or energized to save. Wait, Massimo, before yeah. we have our poll. Ah, okay, sorry. sorry. So people, yeah. I hope they're still uh, there. I don't see any questions, so maybe I hope that's fine. So we try to summarize that. We want to have your, say, um, opinion on this, uh, on this information. So how does redundancy to a more power supply connecting parallel improve safety? So only in case... Uh, that improves safety only in case of under voltage condition on output of a power supply. First, second, only in case of over voltage condition on output of a power supply. In both cases, on none of above. So, if you, I know maybe you have this information already on your background, maybe you want to today by Massimo. So, what did uh, there is. Uh, what is the right the right answer for this? I want to just uh, highlight this and give you maybe specifically more information about this uh, if a redundancy is a really improving safety or not. <clears throat> so, in case of over voltage, uh, under voltage, what is your opinion on this? There is different, um, of course, information on the market. We have our own information and then we try to highlight that. Okay, thank you. Uh, you wanna, maybe you can wait another few seconds if you wanna answer and then we go to the, what is uh, the correct uh, information about that. Okay, let's stop it. So we will say that uh, by applying internally to each power supply redundant protection against the over voltage condition for reducing uh, the, let's say, uh, the probability of the, the over voltage uh, uh, happens. Uh, this, of course, uh, the redundant can, uh, of course, uh, uh, protect uh, the output of the power supply. So, in case of over voltage, of course, that redundancy and uh, uh, improve safety. Of course, if uh, there are over voltage protection side. About uh, the under voltage condition, and it's true that the redundancy improves the safety in the sense that they reduce the probability that this condition could happen. But of course, it cannot reduce it to zero because there are always, as Massimo said, the condition of simultaneous lead to uh, let's say failure, simultaneous failures, and the common uh, the common cause fault uh, that can of course uh, reduce uh, uh, can lead to zero. But this common mode of fault uh, situation are typically twenty or fifty between twenty and fifty times less than the normal failure condition. So does the redundancy typically improve the safety between twenty and fifty times? Uh, for the under voltage conditions. And uh, we'll say that uh, in both cases, both cases uh, redundancy improve basically the safety. Okay, thank you for answering and uh, we continue to the next slide. Okay, thank you Andrea, come back to our presentation. And uh, as I said, uh, we introduce now the, the concept of safety power supply applied to a typical application as a de-energized to save or energized to save. 
As we know, typically the safety system are designed to remove power to the system, the energized to safe application. Therefore, the failure of the power supply, which goes to zero output voltage, is considered a safe failure. So we assume that all safety functions are de-energized to safe or de-energized to safe type. Really, there are many applications where the safety function is to energize the load. Therefore, of the energized to safe or energized to treat type, as in fire and gas system, a safety power supply is designed to guarantee a seed true or seed free safety level also for energized to safe application, which need to energize the load on request. Well, for this type of application, redundancy and overvolta protection are essential and mandatory. Overvolta protection, uh, as mentioned above, is a fundamental in a safety power supply system because it allows us to reduce the risk of system downtime considerably. In fact, if one of the safety power supply fails in an over voltage condition, the protection brings the output to zero volt, allowing the other safety power supply to continue working co correctly without the risk of sending the system to shut down. A standard power supply instead without protection would cause a shutdown of the full plant with the consequence repercussion of or unproductive and cost. A seal free level power supply system with over voltage protection is able to increase operation safety, productivity, and reduces cost. A power supply redundancy system must be used when the safety of the power supply is essential. For this reason, the redundant power supply system are using critical sectors such as the oil and gas or pharmaceuticals. And in all those applications where the loss of power supply translates into the loss of sensitive information or in all those applications where they're certainly of having a correct power supply on request is a fundamental. It must also be used in all systems where every minute of production and time is extremely costly. Let's talk about uh, system availability to the process. As we see from the slide on the screen, for the energized to safe application, typically normally energized load. The seal free level, a safety level is easily reached through a type of one out of one configuration. For this type of application, we can achieve true redundancy and increase in, a, in the availability to the process. This allows us a further quality step in guaranteeing production continuity at the plant and higher safety level. As regards energized to safe application, typically normally de-energized load, as mentioned above, redundancy is essential to reach a C2 or C3 level. In fact, without redundancy with a single safety power supply, only the C1 level can be reached and also availability to the process is low. But by composing a configuration one out of two or one out of three, it's possible to get an higher C level up to C3. And at the same time, increase the availability of the process also for, for energized to safe application. Well, Andrea, I leave you to explain the rest of the... Okay, we have only two slides for this presentation, then we go to the Q&R. Um, sorry, to question and answer. Uh, we have uh, uh, highlighted this point. So also the IEC 61508 is very important is highlighting this, uh, uh, the importance of the safety power supply 
the power so that must be included in the in the in the loop calculation. So this is uh, the the first important concept. We see here how this power supply is uh, uh, is taking part. It's a part of the sieve. So the the, the each subsystem as a percentage. Of course, the valve in the, in the loop is the most important part, and the, because it's the mechanical part, must be tested probably uh, with the higher frequency than the electronic components. But uh, also, uh, such barrier transmitters or others as have uh, to be uh, have to be tested, and the power supply too. So there is a special let's say weight uh, of. Uh, uh, also the power supply in the loop. So, uh, so there are, we wanna just uh, give a few points. So what is uh, very important, what are the, say the features that uh, the power safety power supplies can, uh, can grant. So zero volt out in case of faulty event, under voltage protection, over voltage protections, so, under voltage below 20, uh, over voltage over 30. So there is a uh, monitoring, so fault alarm in case of uh, any uh, fault inside, reduce the dangerous failure. And also the dangerous undetected failure became dangerous detected. So the failure inside that can be dangerous and the basic are not detected, so DU, can became, if you have diagnostic, of course, dangerous detected. And the full field of IAC 6508-2 requirements. So let's uh, go quickly to the other, so our details, but uh, maybe we can skip this part and uh, open the new presentation regarding the, uh, the question and answer. There is a yes. question mark probably there from one attendees? Uh, yes, uh, we have a question from uh, our attendees related to the slide uh, uh, for normally energized and normally de-energized load. Andrea. Okay, I didn't see this one, what is it? Previous but uh, this, this slide, it means that uh, different uh, scene levels can be achieved for different type of uh, loads. We need a different configuration for uh, our power supply system to, to get uh, um, a sea level for uh, different uh, type of load, normally energized or normally de-energized. Yeah, this, our uh, CL3 power supplies uh, use only one power supply is a CL3 for normally energized, but it cannot be used for the same CL3 yes in a configuration, in the normally de-energized configuration. Yes. It must be redundant in order to achieve the CL2 and probably tripled if we want to achieve the CL3. <clears throat> okay, so we have a few questions that uh, oh, yeah. you, you made during your registration. So we're gonna go through that. Well, in the next uh, short presentation, we have the question we are usually asked about today's topic. Andrea, who is uh, in, cost, in constant contact with our customer, with those uh, who create the application and therefore brings us back the questions we are asking most frequently and which we'll try to answer here today. Well, Andrea, uh, the first question is, uh, is 24 volt DC power supplies consider a fail safe on do not impact the safety of the SIS? So I repeat again this point. So uh, this is not true, of course. <laughs> uh, we, as we said, the, the, the typical operating range is between 20 and 30 volts. So that is the normal output for a power supply. It can be 24, 26, 28 sometimes. So the dangerous failure are voltage higher than 30 volts because this can really damage the load. So in this case, for protecting this uh, uh, high voltage, it is very important to reduce the redundant protection circuit in the over voltage condition. So, and the output um, between two and 20 volts is also dangerous because this can cause uh, the, the load working outside the range and uh, can have some malfunctions. 
This also condition is avoided with the redundancy of the power supplies. Okay, if you have two uh, redundant power supplies, of course, if one is uh, going down, the other will continue steady at 24 volts. But there is also the common cause failures nice. that we must have already highlighted. And this is a, a, a beta factor that caused the failure applied to, uh, let's say, uh, at the Basically, the two power supplies can uh, can fail and can go and can uh, um, deeply go to uh, voltage lower than twenty volts. Well, Andre, another question: How power supplies can influence performance of SIS, and what is day of design and preventive maintenance requirements? Well, in this case, uh, of course, uh, uh, the SIS is designed to trip uh, and go to a safe state but lose power. That is uh, the de-energized conditions. So it means that if uh, the power supply is failed, has to, able, uh, has to be able to reach these safe states. But uh, normally in the factory, as you experience, uh, the power cannot be turned off because there are some uh, architecture, some uh, uh, availability, some process has to be guaranteed in uh, on condition. So we say that the power has this uh, uh, double role in safety. So the power needs to be reliable. So so the overvolt has to protect uh, from uh, uh, risk of burning the instruments. And also the undervolt has to be avoided. These both cases could cause the instrument to fail, not to go to a safe state. So high voltage and low voltage. And also this uh, second role is the, the power needs to be available. And uh, that's why redundancy and load sharing uh, is uh, very important in the industry. So uh, if you have a power that go down, everything goes down. You fail with the power, everything goes down. And uh, and the risk for let's say uh, for stopping the production for a power supply or heavy accident is very high. So we say that uh, uh, also looking at it, I know I think most of you know that this is the uh, how the probability failure on demand is degraded by the time. So CL three power supply is not. Uh, standard cannot be guaranteed standard over the time and so it, it is of course it degrades by the time and, and has to be tested uh, uh, not frequently by by certain years it is uh, described in every safety manual okay andrea uh, to understand the importance to use a safety power supply system is important to understand uh, the difference between safe and dangerous failure. What is the difference between them? Okay, so say, let's say the normal status that we say is uh, between 20 and 30. Dangerous failures are below 20 and uh, higher than 30, as we already repeat a lot of times. So below 20 instrumentation work out of specification why 30, more than 30, you can destroy the, the uh, this documentation connected. So the seal certification grants that, that uh, the unit is working for the specified seal. Uh, you have the specification for the seal you wanna reach it and that it works for the certain seal uh, specification you wanna reach it. So, and the multiple over voltage protection grants that uh, this uh, seal uh, has to be respected. So, typically, the seal lever for a single power, su power supply is a seal three without redundancy, as we have seen. But uh, we say that for normally de energize, so you want to energize in case of uh, uh, failure, is only seal one, and seal two is only granted. Uh, with uh, redundancy. So redundancy is very important for granting the, uh, the, the seal rating, okay, for normal energize, or if you are normal energize, which is the, the, let's say the most common application, this, the redundancy grants the availability. Granting the same as a level, but uh, 
always CL3, but it grants more availability in case of uh, fault. Okay, thank you, Andrea. And uh, in the concept of the safety power supply, the availability is, uh, of course, uh, very, very important. What is the difference between uh, safety and uh, availability? So, safety, seal means safety, does not mean availability. So safety means a demand of functional safety on the base IC61508 for manufacturer, IC511 for uh, system integrator for uh, integration company. So it's a standard for safety for process safety. Availability is, uh, however, is defined as the proportional time for which the equipment is able to perform its function. So availability is different from reliability. So because this takes time to repair. So an item equipment maybe is not uh, very reliable, but uh, if it's uh, repaired on time, it can be, of course, uh, its availability is very high. Okay. Ah, okay, this is also this one. So it's uh, the same slides we're repeating and uh, it, uh, of course, highlight uh, what is the configuration uh, necessary configuration for uh, increasing the availability for a normal energize and also increasing the safety and availability for normally de energize. And uh, the next uh, question is uh, related to the possible configuration to reach uh, the different uh, sea levels with the, our uh, safety power supply system. Okay, if you look here for normal energize, so use a uh, one power supply. Uh, depending on what uh, percentage of the CF you are taking count, but uh, and uh, what uh, is the cell level? So let me highlight this point. So here we have cell three and cell three. Here we have only cell two. So ten percent, twenty percent of the CF. So use a one power supply. It can be the ten percent, one point five year T proof. So testing proof after why the cell three is uh, is gone. So from cell three. You move to C2. If you take 20% of C, it's a three years. Okay. While for C2, you can use for, let's say, uh, the lifetime of the, the system of the power supply. Completely. While if you use two power supplies here, the second line, you increase uh, co considerably the T proof in eight years and 16 years for 20% of the C. So basically, the power supply, as you can see, the power supply, if you're using the seal two loops, uh, you can use uh, uh, for, for all uh, the installation lifetime without testing. While if you use more power supplies connected, you, of course, you increase the availability, but uh, you uh, the safety is decreased because you need more testing than two power supplies. That's for normal energize. For normal de is completely different. So we can say that uh, uh, this is the uh, the situation for uh, it says uh, seal one is only one power supplies. It's uh, of course uh, T proof is one year or two years for twenty percent of the sieve. It cannot be of course uh, seal two one power supply. If you two power supplies, it cannot be seal. Uh, it's not seal one. It's seal two. So the lifetime the T proof is uh, increased considerably and it uh, uh, it is the same if you move uh, if you have more than two four or six power supplies to connect it together oh sorry i move that okay massimo well uh sorry a safe at this point a safe power supply should be used uh, for the system that only participate in a sieve uh, yeah, well, uh, this is, uh, of course, uh, the safe, uh, safe power, su power supply is uh, a product that has been designed with, uh, in the safety manner, with the safety components, with, uh, uh, let's say, high quality components. And, uh, of course, beside everything, uh, if a C is not required, a safe power supply is, of course, uh, a good way to, uh, to use uh, and say a good uh, say it's a good manner 
for uh, increasing the safety, increase the availability of your system because uh, everything, the calculation, the failure rate of single components is a, is a calculated, is a put into the FMEDA of the device and uh, it uh, grants uh, more, uh, uh, if not safety, more availability. So, but it's not required, of course. You can use or not in uh, non-safety application a sealed power supply. <clears throat> and now, what is the solution for installation in, uh, in Hazardous Area? Well, Hazardous Area, there are, we have a solution for uh, certification for uh, installation zone two or division two uh, for uh, Europe or also I, uh, for America. And uh, they, if you take uh, this uh, rack mounting the rack also there is a special hot swapping uh, hot swapping uh, features for uh, um, disconnecting the unit in uh, uh, in uh, also in zone two so this installation is also for zone two this also is a hot swapping for zone two there are indeed uh, these uh, micro switches that uh, and screw that disconnect the power the unit from the AC input power in zone two. <clears throat> well, some words about the diagnostic uh, and uh, mode bus uh, with the, our power supply system. So we have to have uh, this possibility that is an option with uh, information with a display that uh, show all the information regarding the uh, all the power supply modules, so like. Uh, um, AC input, uh, current power and frequency, DC output voltage, current power, current sharing, uh, current sharing for each module, uh, internal temperature, fault condition, everything is uh, uh, continuous monitored by the display and also, of course, uh, can be transferred to the PLC over Modbus uh, RTU uh, interface. Okay, Andrea, and uh, which is the difference uh, between the redundant power supply in a rack or with the classic uh, wiring uh, without the rack? Yeah, uh, of course, a standard and under supply, the wiring is external. The maintenance required the wiring. Uh, solution is, of course, uh, more competitive in price, but required is external diodes. Uh, that also um, consume a lot of energy. So it's um, cause a voltage drop. There are some, uh, let's say, uh, disadvantage on using that. The rack uh, is a little bit more expensive, but uh, the output already connected. Uh, do you, know, you don't need to disconnect to the wiring in case of maintenance. It can be also in uh, mounting zone two and uh, is without swapping, and there is also this uh, diagnostic. But basically, uh, the wiring is uh, made in factory, so at, so it's uh, made with a rack, so you don't need to wire any external diodes because the diodes are already inside the modules. While in the standard power supply, you need this external kit for make the redundancy. Uh, make it redundancy. Perfect. And, uh, and to finish our presentation, what happens if uh, one device connected, one load connected to the power supply is uh, in short uh, condition? Well, uh, basically all power supply, when there is a short, they start, uh, they stop uh, working, so they go to zero. Uh, we develop a special features uh, on our power supply that uh, in case uh, a fault is detected, uh, a very high peak of current, uh, we talk about 800 amps for 0.5 milliseconds, so very short time. So, and uh, this uh, current is causing the distant opening of the protective fuse or circuit breaker for avoiding uh, the shutdown. This is a special feature so that we implement into the power supply for protecting our system. So we finish, we don't see any pure question from, uh, more questions from our attendees. Thank no you. No question. No question. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we answer, maybe not, we don't know. Anyhow, uh, we, we reminded there are other webinars. Please go to 
our website and you can check for the next webinars. Uh, we remind you that if you have any question, take a question that is Massimo, of course, is more for uh, practical or application questions. But anyhow, you can write to us, you can find to us. Okay. We want to also ask you to answer to this last uh, uh, poll. How did we do? Of course, it is uh, anonymous. You can write whatever you like. Uh, it's uh, very important for us for improving our, our of course, uh, um, information and uh, train to our customer. Thank you for answering. I remind you that also you can see this uh, webinar in uh, our YouTube channel. And this uh, is recorded, has been recorded, uh, so you can uh, see again or transfer to your colleague. And there are all the other webinars are also recorded. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, we hope to, maybe I can stop now this uh, poll. We can uh, hope to see you again the next uh, in the next uh, webinars. Thank you. Thank you, Massimo, too. Thank you, Andrea, thank you. and thank you all our attendees for the participation in our webinar. See you the next time.